Right, here we go. Back again. Back again. All right. And today I've got an update on the lockdown, also on the vaccine, and a bit of a twist in the tail in regards to the 5G, the burning of the 5G towers in the UK, right? And they're kind of pointing and at blaming someone, and you can probably guess who, right? But anyway, in terms of the lockdown, today they're saying no end in sight. Senior ministers expected to extend UK's lockdown. And that was today, and they were saying it yesterday as well. And I can't confirm, actually, that they have extended it. And we'll get on to that in a minute. And it says that, with the Easter weekend looming and soaring temperatures forecast for Good Friday and Saturday, experts are concerned that failing to maintain instructions to stay at home could prove catastrophic. Right? So it's interesting that they use that word and uh, what are they expecting to happen? Right? They're obviously expecting a lot of people to go out. What's that then going to cause? What are they going to um, say that's happened because of that? Right? Because they'll have something in store. And they're saying that they're turning people away as well who are driving to different destinations. And in The Guardian, it's also reporting police chiefs call on number 10 to tighten UK lockdown. Right, so they want to tighten the screw now, take away more freedoms. It says that in uh, The Guardian, Easter weekend will be a major test of compliance. Right, so they're expecting people probably not to listen and asking people to report or basically uh, snitch, okay? And it's saying that more stringent restrictions to prevent people driving long distances are among options supported by at least five chief, co chief constables who want enforcement action to be bolstered by clearer and tougher, mid and tougher government curbs. Right? So they want, uh, they want more restrictions. That's what they're asking for. And he's quoted here saying, We need to say you can't drive. The burden needs to be on the individual, not the state, to prove reasonableness, right? So they're wanting to basically have the powers to fine you if you've not got good reason, right? And it says, also, striking a balance between allowing economic activities and keeping controls tight, even to prevent a rise in infections, is likely to be the optimal strategy until effective vaccines become widely available. Despite the fact that control policies, including social distancing, behavioural change and public awareness, will probably be maintained for some time. Yeah, expect it to be, because it will be, right? Also, uh, one day ago, UK will have Europe's worst death toll, study says. So it must be right. It's a study, okay? So expect it to be high then in the UK, by the sounds of that. Also, in the mirror, UK nowhere near. Ending lockdown, says Sadiq Khan, with peak still 10 days away. Right, so they've got a figure, or have they? Coronavirus uh, government admits it does not know when epidemic peak will come. So they don't know then, or do they? Also in the sun, coronavirus lockdown likely to last until May, and death peak may still be 10 days away. So again 10 days. In the sun, ministers prepare to extend lockdown into May, with coronavirus peak still 10 days away, right? In uh, France have seemingly not reached their peak, which I think is about 10,000 now, seemingly. And I think they have also now um, stopped people from exercising during the day, right? And I would imagine that will also come for the UK, probably sometime next week, right? Um, also, they're mentioning of uh, a second wave. 
Now this word wave is getting mentioned a hell of a lot at the moment. And uh, if you just search the word wave, uh, you will see what I mean, right? And uh, I think that is possibly worth bearing in mind. And uh, they're on about there, Singapore's getting its third wave of coronavirus infections. So expect them to come, right? And uh, their tsunami of virus patients, The Guardian, two weeks ago. Right, and I think these words are worth bearing in mind at the moment, alright? Anyway, uh, lockdowns can't end until COVID-19 vaccine found, study says. And this is being reported quite a lot now, right? And by the sounds of it, um, any any nation that's on lockdown is not going to get out until there's a vaccine. When that's going to be, I'd, 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 I wouldn't really want to hazard a guess, but I would probably say at the end of the year, right? But um, I certainly won't be queuing up to get it, that's for sure, all right? So expect expect to hear more of that if you're on lockdown, okay? In, uh, in the UK, like I was saying, uh, Dominic Rob says we are not done yet, as lockdown set to be extended right and this is just today the uk half came out and said that yes it is being extended right uh, lockdown extended says rob the foreign secretary said he chaired a cobra meeting to assess the uk's latest position the government is still obtaining data to have the fullest picture of the virus spread right but how long's that going to take why not just tell us, tell us in the first place how long it's going to take? But again, it's all about creating the fear, and we'll get into that. And uh, they have pointed for a while now, and I reported on this before, uh, UK and US lockdown could go on for months, right? And they reckon possibly as long as six months. Um, there's other reports possibly 18 months, right? So, yeah, just hang in there. And now that brings me on to um, the dreaded vaccine, right? <laughs> Which, like I said, uh, I won't be queuing up to get, right? And that is for sure, okay? And uh, it says here that in the Washington Times, uh, the stage is set for mandatory lucrative vaccine, right? So somebody's going to make a lot of fucking money. Hmm, I wonder who it's going to be, eh? Could it be our good friend Jill? I mean, Bill, eh? Who knows, right? We'll just have to wait and see. But the stage is set, right? And it's mandatory. But of course, they want it to be mandatory. This is from the UK. Three and four GPs believe child vaccination should be compulsory, right? This is not, not that long ago. Nothing even to do with the coronavirus, but... Uh, three quarters of GPs believe it should become compulsory for children to be vaccinated. <clears throat> Excuse me, and that's new research that's been done that they've found that this needs to be done, right? It needs to be compulsory, of course, right? Uh, the Gold Coast, now only letting ch uh, parents and children who've been vaccinated into care centres. So by that, if you've not had a vaccination, you won't get to see your fucking kids. Right, this is where we're at. COVID-19 scare leads to more digital surveillance. Talk of mandatory vaccine. Right, more talk about it. Of course, it's coming. Here's another one. Uh, the Badger Herald. In light of coronavirus epidemic, vaccines should be mandatory. Hmm, should they? Uh, flu vaccinations surge at chemists amid coronavirus fears, right? So the fear sure is kicking in and we'll touch on that as well. Uh, this is from last year. England may well end up with mandatory vaccines, says top doctor, right? So he obviously knows what he's on about. And this also from last year. Hancock compulsory vaccinations being seriously considered. Now this boy Hancock he basically runs the UK at the moment, right? And he's saying here, Health Secretary suggests government could 
introduce law soon to tackle failing rates. Right, because they were behind on people getting vaccinated. But it says the government is looking very seriously at making vaccinations compulsory for state school pupils and has taken advice on how such a law could work, the health secretary has said. So it's been in the planning, right? It's, it's all been in the pipeline for a long time. And it says that, asked about such potential opposition in the UK, Hancock said, actually, I've received advice inside government this week on how we might go about it. And I'm looking very seriously at it. Right, and that was then. So think about now, with all the fear, people will be screaming for it, of course. Right, this is what they're saying. So like I said, this has all been pl coming, right? It's been coming for a long time. And uh, <laughs> this I've seen this today. I, I just got a shot of coronavirus vaccine. I hope it works, right? <laughs> and this guy is a volunteer to get uh, the vaccine trials, okay? And it says that I'm taking part in a clinical trial that could help end the pandemic, right? So they've obviously picked a random volunteer to use for vaccine trials, right? And this guy, uh, Ian Hayden, is a public information specialist at the University of Washington in Seattle, right? So maybe not so random after all, okay? So that's quite interesting, that. In his diary, he says... On Wednesday morning, I received an injection in my left shoulder. It contained 250 micrograms of an experimental coronavirus vaccine, the first to be tested in humans. I am one of 45 volunteers taking part in a phase one clinical trial that could help end the pandemic. Right? So, I wonder who the 45 volunteers could be. Now, I think that would be an interesting list of names to see, but I doubt we will. Alright? And now, that brings me on to um, the David Icke interview that got um, banned, of course. Right? And no wonder, because he covered a lot, right? And, uh, and as always, he hit the nail on the head with a lot of stuff, right? And um, I'm not surprised that they've banned it. But if you've not seen it, then definitely check it out. It is on other platforms, I believe, right? So if you can't, if you need a link for it, then uh, uh, put it in the comments and I'll try and get you one so you can watch it, right? But a few things he did mention about is uh, fear and stress, right? Now, fear weakens our immune system and can cause cardiovascular damage, gastrointestinal problems such as ulcers and irrit irritable bowel syndrome and decreased fertility. It can lead to accelerated aging and even premature death. Right, now that's just fear. That's fucking fear alone. And imagine the amount of fear that is going on at the moment. All right? And in terms of stress, well, when muscles stay tense for long, they can lead to other reactions in the body and even promote stress-related disorders. But stress can also seep into your cells, raising temperatures, toxins, infections and resource shortages threaten how cells function and impact your health. And, now, and that's just stress, all right? And like I said, um, the stress and the anxiety levels and the fear levels at the moment um, have to be through the roof, I'd imagine, with the amount of people that are on lockdown, all right? And we'll touch on that again in a minute. But now I want to uh, touch on the um, burning of the 5G towers in the UK, of course, right? And there was an article that came out today, right? And it was in um, Bloomberg. And it says, 5G virus conspiracy theory fueled 
by coordinated effort. Right? And they're saying that this is a dis disinformation campaign and it's organised. And it says, a researcher at Hammond bin Khalafi University in Qatar who specialises in online disinformation networks analysed 22,000 recent interactions on Twitter mentioning 5G and Corona and said he found a large number of accounts displaying what he termed inauthentic activity. He said the effort bears some hallmarks of a state-backed campaign. Huh. So, yeah, all right. Who would they blame? I wonder. Can you guess? And it says that Jones said the campaign uses a strategy similar to Russia's Internet Research Agency, which was behind a disinformation campaign during the 2016 US presidential campaign. But he said he hasn't yet concluded that Russia or any other government or organisation is behind the effort. Right, so he's not saying it was Russia, but he fucking may as well have, really, with what he said there. So are they saying that this is a an attack from Russia? That's what it sounds like, or from somebody. So it could possibly be, like I said before, uh, some sort of false flag. But I, again, they would capitalise on anything, right? And may spin it into their own. This is what they do, right? And like I said before, they're masters at deception, right? Could it have been a false flag? It could well be. I mean, what sort of, like I said before, what sort of regulations are they now are they now going to bring in, in terms of um, people that think different about five G or people that don't want it, right? So it, I think we should keep an eye on what's going on here. And uh, in terms of humanity, we really need to think ahead with how we combat what's going on, right? And how <laughs> how we do that, I'm not really sure. But we've really got a box clever, right? Because these people aren't fucking stupid, all right? And uh, I did see this today, okay? Lockdown is the big is the world's biggest psychological experiment, and we pay the price. All right, and this was in the World Economic Forum. I just read this today, this morning, right? And it's basically an, uh, saying that um, 2.6 billion people are on lockdown. One third of the world's population, right, are living under some kind of quarantine. And it's the largest psychological experiment ever conducted. That's actually the fucking words that they're using here. Experiment, right? And it says... In short, and perhaps unsurprisingly, people who are quarantined are very likely to develop a wide range of symptoms of psychological stress and disorder, including low mood, insomnia, stress, anxiety, anger, irritability, emotional exhaustion, depression, and post-traumatic post stress symptoms, low mood and irritability are, spe are specifically stand out uh, specifically stand out as being very common. The study notes. I think, to be honest, all of them are common. Right? And I can bet any money on it. Alright? I've seen it. I've seen the evidence. Just here in my town. Right? Now, if Again, think about the fear. Think about what it does, what they're doing to people, right? And it says here, when it comes to offering psychological support to their populations, most countries are late to react, as, as they were to the novel coronavirus. Better late than never. Eh, uh, no, it fucking ain't, right? But it's done deliberately, of course. This is all part of the fear, the confusion, Right, it creates the anxiety, the stress, and that leads to people getting fucking ill. No wonder people are ill with what's going on. And this is just the beginning, right? I really do hope that the lockdown ends soon, but from what I can see, it's not going to happen, right? And just finally, 
Um, so a subscriber mentioned this film, right? This is just interestingly, right, as a side note, kind of. But it's uh, Soylent Green, right? And uh, I've, I had never heard of it. It's from the 70s. Uh, that's the cover there. But um, it's quite interesting. And it's about a pandemic, right? And it's set in for the year 2022, unbelievably, right? And uh, Soylent Green is some sort of food, Right, and it's, it, the film's based on a novel, Make Room, Make Room, from 1966, funnily enough, right? And the, uh, the Soylent Green is a food processed protein ration made of human beings and distributed to an unsuspecting populace, right? So I thought that was pretty interesting, and I also did see uh, an anagram, seemingly, of Soylent Green was, it came up uh, Lent in Rose, right? And Lent in Rose is a plant. It's a poisonous plant, right? It wouldn't kill you if you ate it, but it would over time because it's toxic, okay? I thought that was pretty interesting. And um, if you rearrange the words of uh, Soylent Green, you actually get stolen energy. Right, so I thought that yeah was uh, something to note as well. So that film's maybe worth checking out. So thanks to the subscriber who uh, let gave me the heads up on that. All right. Anyway, we got there in the end, and that is about it. Bye bye.